So we are going to land the plane today, Lord willing, as we approach part six of our Psalm 23 series. How many have enjoyed this series thus far? It has been so good. It's been enlightening. I encourage you, if, you've, if this is your first time here today, I encourage you to go back on our website, limafirst.church, and just begin to watch the entire series of this. It's, it's been so powerful. Last week, how many of you were not here last, last weekend? Raise your hand. I, wow, what an incredible, incredible service as the Lord prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies. But here today, we're going to be focusing on verse 6. But before we get to that, I want us to, with one voice, one accord, here and online, if we could say this all together, Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. You ready? Huh? Are you ready? Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Somebody say amen. So we're going to be focusing on verse 6 and breaking this down pretty close to word by word and by phrase. And it says this, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for just a few minutes. No, forever. Now, how many Shirley's do we have in the room? No takers? All right? We want to look at, hey, there we go, Shirley. Shirley's in the house. So let's look at this word by word. We're, look at the word surely. In the Hebrew, it is pronounced ah. Look at your neighbor. Well, be, be careful, don't do that. You might spit on him, right? It's ah. And it means, or it is, it is really just, it's, it's an emphatic word. In other words, this word surely, when it is pronounced, ah, it is done with like an exclamation point, an exclamation mark that is behind it. It is an emphatic word, and it means truly. It means certainly. It goes on to a deeper meaning that this word ah or surely means there's no doubt. There's no doubt. It's a word of affirmation, and it means to be firm. In other words, it's set in stone. You can write it down. You you ever had your mom say, you mark my words? In other words, it was going to happen. And those of you who were smart, Alex, you were like, right? And then you got boxed upside the head. It is a word that means you can take it to the bank. In other words, it is going to happen, it's established, it is firm, and there's nothing that's going to change my mind. It's established. So we get it? The word surely means that it is a fact. It's related to the word achen, and it means with a strong, again, a strong assertive uh, force, it means it is a fact. So it is a fact, starts out this entire phrase, in other words, it is going to happen. How many love it when God gives you a promise and it doesn't matter what it sounds like, it doesn't matter what it looks like, it doesn't matter what's going on around me, when God gives you a promise, it's a promise and you know sooner or later he's going to fulfill that promise. 
So when we talk about this, we're talking about something, a word that means Establish. It's firm. It's set in stone. You can take it to the bank. Ezekiel 16, verse 62. It says, so I will establish my covenant with you. Establish. In other words, get it in order. It is going to happen. I am going to make sure that there's a covenant for you and there's nothing that's going to get that off, off base. I'm going to establish my covenant with you And you will know that I am the Lord. Psalm 90 verse 17 goes on to say, May the favor of the Lord, our God, rest upon us. And then it says this, Establish the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. How many love it when you do something, you work hard at something that it is established? It's done. In other words, it's solid work. It's not going to fall apart in a few days. How many own their own businesses here? Anybody? So when you do something, you want it to be effective. You want it to be long-lasting, and you want it to be something that, that, that someone can take on, and they don't have to worry about it. Because they know that the product that you're selling, whatever that you're, 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 you're giving to them, it is a done deal. It's established. Y'all with me here today? So when we open up verse 6 and it says, surely. Basically what God is saying is he's kind of leaning over the table and he looks at you and he'll say, it's going to happen. That's what this entire verse 6 is based upon is God's promise. How many know that there's people around us that their, their word isn't worth a plug nickel? Right? How many sit? Never mind. (laughs) But we know that God's word stands firm forever. His word stands firm. So what is it that he's putting his stamp on? What is it that he's given the big surely, right? What is it that he's saying? He's saying that surely goodness, goodness, the word goodness in the Hebrew is pronounced tov. It means to be pleasant. It means to be agreeable. How many like to hang out with good people? Right? How many hang out with friends in low places? According to the scripture written by Garth Brooks, right? <laughs> Goodness is something that is pleasant. It is something that is agreeable. It actually means rich or even valuable. How many know that the goodness of God is valuable? It means to be happy. You remember that old hymn we used to sing, because I'm so happy, right? It's written by the old saints. It means to be kind. This word goodness means to be right. It actually means welfare. It means prosperity. That's what this word goodness means. But I love this one. It means favor. You see, favor defined is this. Something that is done or granted out of goodwill. It's not something that is given from justice or something that is uh, uh, for, for a fee not something that you work for. It is actually something that is free, that God gives. In other words, it's a, it's a kind act. So when God comes along and he says, surely goodness, he's saying that his favor is resting upon us, his good will. And there's nothing that that, that you've done to receive this, I'm just going to do it because I am good. That's in my nature. That's what God is saying here. That's in my nature. It's favor. Psalm chapter 5, verse 12 says, Surely the Lord will bless the righteous, and you surround them with your favor as a shield. You surround them with your good will, O oh God. You surround them with a kind act. 
How many of you want to be surrounded by God's kindness? That's everybody in this room. Psalm 30, 1 through 5. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me up. You lifted me up out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. O Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. Sing to the Lord, O you saints of his. Praise his holy name. His anger, listen to this, his anger only lasts for a moment, but his favor... His goodwill, it lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for the night, but rejoicing, his favor, it comes in the morning. Now listen, what happens in the morning? Well, I get a cup of coffee. No, what happens in the morning? Who said it? Morning happens when we wake up. In the morning, when we realize God's goodness, we will realize God's goodness not just in the a.m., but when you and I finally wake up and we see that he is our hope, he is our shield, he is our strength, he is that help in every time of trouble. He is Good. Y'all with me here today? Now let's look at a bit further. Surely goodness and what? Mercy. Now this mercy, shechzed, it means this, loving kindness. Loving kindness. That's what his mercy is. It means zeal. It means beauty. But it also means faithfulness. I don't know about you, but God has remained faithful to me. And I love that song that we sing, all my life you've been faithful. But how many could flip that around and say, all my life I have been faithful to you? You see, that's the character and nature of God. That's what mercy really means. That he gives me mercy instead of giving me what I really truly deserve. That's what, that's what mercy is. Romans chapter 9, verse 16 and following, it does not therefore depend on man's effort or desire, but on what? God's mercy. It depends on God's mercy. It goes on to say in verse 18, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy and he hardens whom he wants to harden. How many have ever seen someone that they've received the mercy and the forgiveness of God and they've lived, they start living their life according to God's word, but how many have also seen some people that they, they've come in and they've pre, been presented with a gift, the mercy of God, the blood of Jesus, but instead of receiving that, they reject it. They become hardened in their hearts. This is why we need revival. This is why we need renewal, not just at Lima First, but all in every church in Allen County, in every every church in the state of Ohio. That's why we need revival in every state, in our nation, and all across this world. This morning, just this morning, at 6.30 in the morning, I had a conversation with two of our missionaries, Gil and Dolphy Moonda. It's, it's 2.30 in the afternoon in Tanzania, and they are out in the middle of the bush today. It's amazing technology. I was speaking to them on the phone. They're out in the middle of nowhere, and I said, how's it going? Oh, God has been so faithful. God's been faithful not only here, but all the way on the other side of the world, God has been faithful. He's shown us his mercy. But when we're talking about goodness and mercy, what is it that they are doing? Remember, God said, surely 
Take it to the bank. Write it down. Mark it down. It is going to happen. Goodness and mercy are going to do what? What? They are going to follow me. And here's what's interesting about following me. The word follow means, in, in the Hebrew, it's radath. It means this, to run after. How many have ever had someone driving behind you and they're following you a little bit too close? And you thank God for his goodness. And you show them how good God's been by giving them their brake light. <laughs> right? Be careful. But how many know there's things in this life that follows you that's not a good thing? Years ago, after football practice, somebody didn't like and care for us because I was going the speed limit, and they literally followed us to our house, got out of their car, and began to threaten us. Now, listen. Oh, the goodness of God. There's things that follow you around in this life. Things that we need to start rejecting and pushing off. Right? How many say there's some things that have followed you in your life and you know that you've got you to keep pushing those things off to the side because those things are not of God? But in this reference, God is saying, surely, count it, take it to the bank. I am releasing my goodness and my mercy, and they now are following you. In other words, they are running after you. They are following earnestly. Another, take it a little bit deeper. God is saying, goodness and mercy are now chasing you. They are chasing you down. In other words, they are running after you. They are pursuing you. Remember the Dukes of Hazard, The sheriff and his Roscoe P. Coltrane, kink, 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 right, right? and they're chasing the Duke boys. And what would he say as Flash was sitting there and his ears were flapping in the wind? He's like, I'm in hot pursuit, right? He's chasing after He's right on the tail of the Duke boys. This is the same concept when you look at it, that goodness and mercy are right behind me. They're following me. They're pursuing me. Now listen, do, do you get that? Do you really get it? I'm, I'm going need, to I need some help. I need some help here today. How many, how many are good Who's good in the room? Who's good? Oh, come here, man. Come here. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Come here. Right. right. Are you good? I try to be. You try to be, right? All right. So listen. Today, you are goodness. Oh. All right. Can you put that on? Can you put that on? So... Yeah, yeah, it's going to fit, right? All right. And how many in this room, is anybody in this room, you're just, you're just merciful. She's like, please, for the love of God, don't ask me to do anything. Right? You want to you help me today? All right, come on. Be merciful. Be merciful to the sermon. All right, come on. Come on up here. So there you go. Your mercy. All right, can you put that on? All right, all right, all right. That's probably not going to fit you because that's made for someone of my stature. All right. But here's... <laughs> Why are you wearing your pajamas to church? <laughs> so listen. Here's what we have to understand. God is saying... Write it down, set it in stone, that goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life. So in other words, wherever I go, 
wherever I walk, see, that was goodness. I defer to you. But here's the thing. Some people, you have been running from God all of your life. You've been running from salvation. You've been running from the call that God has on your life. And the more you run, you don't even... Are you, you ready, Roll? You sure? We're going to see how fast you guys are. Right? Right? They're like, what is he going to do? New and news. <laughs> but you've been running from God all your life. And here's what you don't understand. The more that I run, the more... <laughs> you guys are horrible! Mercy lost her shoe. But here's what's awesome about it. Listen, and here's what we've got to grasp. Some of us have been running from God all of our lives, but you don't understand the concept of God's goodness and his mercy. You don't understand that all the days of my life, these two have been following me, and I don't even have a clue this is why when something happens in my life and I'm not serving God because of his mercy, because of his faithfulness, all I have to do is turn around and there they are. But some people are so focused on resisting the Holy Spirit that they forget to embrace the Holy Spirit. Surely, goodness and mercy are gonna follow me all the days of my life. Now listen. Woo! <laughs> Fat man and little girl. <laughs> Just because, no, these two continue to follow me because God's pursuing my heart. doesn't mean that all's going to be well all the time. Because the more I keep running, it just means the more I'm resisting. And I can reject God's mercy. I can reject the goodness of God. And the longer I keep running out of an act of my disobedience because I want to do things my way, now, this is my paraphrase. What happens is if I keep rejecting God, there just becomes more of a distance. God still wants to have mercy on my life, but I've got to embrace what he has for me. God says, surely it's done. Set it in stone. It can happen. And his mercy and grace will follow me all the days of my life. But if I continue to reject this, do y'all see it? Sooner or later, I've got to embrace this. Sooner and later, I've got to hold on to God's grace and his mercy. Sooner or later, I've got to take hold of the mercy and the goodness of God. Why? Because it's the best thing in my life that I could ever do. It's to take hold for, the, for exactly what God has paid for the price for me. Thank you. Thank you. You can keep those shirts, by the way. God bless you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> do you see it? Surely goodness and mercy they're going to pursue me all the days. Where? All the days of my life. How long is that? Well, a day is a 24-hour period, and just in case you didn't, you skipped that day in class. 
But all the days of my life, it's talking about my entire life. He's after my heart. All the days of my life, when I've done great things, but when I've done stupid things too, he is still after my heart. Why? Because God will never operate outside of his character. He desires that you and I have mercy and grace upon our lives. And that's only because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That's only reason, because of the price that he paid. So surely goodness and mercy are going to follow me how long? A couple days? A couple weeks? No, all the days of my life. I love what Spurgeon says, how he says this. Speaking of goodness and mercy, he said, these twin guardian angels will always be with me at my back and my beck. Just as when great princes go abroad, they must not go unattended, so it is with the believer. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Let's land the plane right now. What does it say after this verse? It says, I will dwell. I'm going to dwell. Yashav, Hebrew word, it means to sit down. I'm going to sit down. It means to remain. It, actually, it means to return. <laughs> I'm going to return to the house. I'm going to return. It means to establish or to inhabit. It means to settle down. But it also means this, to marry. I'm going to marry. I'm going to become one with him. I will dwell the Word of God tells us in several passages of Scripture, talks about dwelling. Colossians 3, 15 through 17, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. And then it says this, Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Psalm 61, 1 through 4 goes on to say, Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. Call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, my strong tower against the foe. And here it is. I long to dwell in your tent forever and to take refuge in the shelter of your wings. I dwell. I dwell. But where is it that we're supposed to dwell? We dwell in the house of the Lord. Be'ith. It's the Hebrew word. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Be'ith, it means a temple, a shelter. It means a palace, but it means this, a fortress. I will dwell in your fortress. Let me ask you this question. Can you really dwell somewhere if you don't have these what happens today if you walk out of this building and you get in your car and you go home but you leave your house keys here at the church you're not getting in your house right Keys are to unlock things. You see, 
if I don't have these, I'm not going to be dwelling. I can be around the house. I can be around the dwelling place, but I can't be in the dwelling place. Y'all tracking with me? I can go up to the window and I can peek in the window and gaze at the goodness and the favor of God. I can look upon his beauty, but I'm looking in from the outside. Why? Because I don't have the keys. How can you get the keys? It's through a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's the key. The Bible says in describing Jesus that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by him. And I will tell you this. You can have good thoughts and you can have good motives and you can live your life and you can be a good person but still never have received the goodness of God, the blood of Jesus, salvation upon your life. You can be a good person and still not have these. Come on now. Some of you got some neighbors Living on, some of you got some family members that if Christ would come today because they don't have Jesus Christ in their hearts. Y'all with me? I will dwell in the house of the Lord for a few days, a few weeks, little vacation spot. No, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And you know what's good about this? When we talk about dwelling in the house of the Lord, we're talking about holding on to the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. You see, while we are here on earth, we have the presence of the Lord with us. But you and I are not destined to be here forever. We are destined, heaven is our home, not here. Heaven is our home, a place that the, the streets are, are paved with gold. There's no more sickness, there's no more sorrow, there's no more death, there's no more pain. There's no more drama. There's no more elections. Come on, can I get a holla? <laughs> because there's only one king, one ruler, one authority, and it's God Almighty. The place where his presence never sleeps, nor does he ever slumber. His presence is everywhere. You see, we have a little tagline in this church and we say this, that his presence is our purpose. I'm not worried about the presence of the Lord making people feel uncomfortable. His presence is really what we need. We are incomplete unless we have him. Some people have been running all their lives running away and rejecting his goodness and mercy that's been pursuing them. How many have ever seen someone, they've run from God, run from God, and all they got to do is turn around and God's right there, <laughs> waiting to take them in. But his desire is not to have goodness and mercy, and that's it. His desire is that you will be with him for all of eternity. And that's only found through a relationship with Jesus Christ.